What up, what up, what up, what up? This is your boy Chris Reed Beast back with another video, man. What's good with you, man? It's good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, every opportunity that I get it to stream, I got to make sure that I go ahead and stream something. Just checking to make sure our audios is good. Audios is good. Video should be good. Great Keys Beats is in the building. What's what's good with you, my brother? Um, we are going to be um, cooking up some beats tonight. Um, but mostly, we're going to start off with some um, music theory. So, uh, you know, music theory specifically for producers. Um, been trying to, uh, as I create these live streams been trying to actually give some like some information and some some um themes and theories and, and series that are like important uh to the people um so with that i've just been trying to make sure i give something that's uh you know something people want to actually tune into uh great key says video and audio is crispy popping good man um um, um, so yeah, man, we're just gonna, you know, be in reason, um, you know, an update right there in the background. I do have the lo-fi, uh, one hour, um, stream, uh, not a stream. I guess it's like a, it's just a playlist. That's what I call it. It's a playlist of, uh, some lo-fi beats that I cooked up, man. And, um, I was having a lot of fun, uh, making those lo-fi beats, um, the selected file could not be found. Wow. Oh, that's really interesting because it was found a, a little earlier. So <laughs> I'm hoping, hoping I don't have to go through no issues, man. Hopefully I don't have to go through no issues because this time I can't find my files. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it was super fun putting together the animation and doing something like, you know, I, I do video work and graphic work and stuff like that but um putting the animation together was just like oh i don't really do this so let's see and ever since then i've been kind of getting more and more into it so like i've been doing like 3d modeling animations like artwork and everything in there is like some of it is like jpegs that i found on google but then like i edited them to kind of make them look you know animated or drawn or whatever but for the most part like the head doesn't belong with that body and and I sw swatched and swapped around some stuff to try to make it work and fit but um if you haven't checked out the lo-fi playlist man uh go ahead and check that out it's up there um a good hour playlist and I plan on doing more and I plan on including uh the good people who watch this stream i plan on including them inside of the future playlist so this playlist is pretty much all my beats lo-fi beats um but the future ones uh will feature other people as well so i'm excited about that man i'm excited to uh introduce that to the channel and um have that be something new so i'm gonna let you guys check out the file this was pretty cool um it was pretty cool working on these beats the way that i did it i used the block mode inside of reason and um when i used the block mode uh i actually just made all of the beats um in different blocks so there's eight beats here and i made them in the block so they all pretty much use the same sounds uh, they use the same sounds, the same uh, like keys and, and um, drums and everything like that. Pretty much everything is the same. And so that way I know like the sound is consistent across all of the lo-fi beats that I was creating. Um, then I made this one. So this was the last one that I made right here. Oh, let me turn that on. I'm bobbing away. It ain't even on.
yeah so like that was one beat that i worked on that was the last beat that i worked on for that group of tracks and um um the lo-fi playlist is up man if you haven't checked it out you know what i'm saying check it out listen to it it's about an hour long i have some other beats on there all some smooth stuff that you can kind of chill and study to you know what i'm saying lay back do your thing Right, cool so um those are some of the beats that are featured on that playlist of course if you want to check that out you feel free to go ahead and check that out all right so what we want to do first right now i don't have this plugged in but i have this one plugged in um so what we want to do right now is we want to actually i'm gonna pull up another camera so that you guys can see my uh keyboard um so that way you can at least see um can at least see where it's at though. I don't see it. That don't make sense at all. There it goes. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm going to just go ahead and, uh, show you guys. Um, my screen one I'm gonna get rid of that so that way we can see this screen and um, we're also going to stretch out this keyboard so you guys can see this live keyboard and then we're going to pull in I got my little got my little uh, duster I was cleaning out my my computer and almost completely crashed it almost completely just lost everything and um <laughs> i'm glad that we don't have to deal with that anymore so um so when we're thinking about um when we're thinking about music theory what is music theory first and foremost um music theory is how music works uh how music works in terms of why we feel the way we feel when we hear certain kinds of music and how to create those moods and how to create those feelings within our own music. Um, so music theory is the process of applying formulas and patterns in order to understand how music works, right? So, you know, you, you figure out things like chords, scales, moods modes all of these different things come into play when we're talking about music theory but the main thing that we want to understand is that music theory for a classical pianist and music theory for a producer are two totally different things so what does a music producer need to know you know when it comes to music theory what could be some helpful things for a music producer versus some things for you know somebody else so as a music producer you know you're trying to make beats the first thing you know you know do you need to know how to create an 11th chord no 
I don't necessarily think you need to know how to create an 11th chord, right? Um, do you need to know how to make a seventh chord? Do you need to know how to make a sustained chord, an augmenting chord, a diminished chord? Uh, no, not necessarily. But do you need to know a major chord from a minor chord? Absolutely. You absolutely need to be able to know the difference between a major chord and a minor chord. And hopefully, if you're listening to the two differences between those, hopefully you can tell the difference between those two moods. You can hear it when you're listening to it. One sounds, one sounds like it's reaching upward and the other sounds like it's reaching downward. It's going down. And primarily what's creating that is this third. The third, or you think of it as the third note in your, or, or it's not the third note in your chord. It's the third note in the key or in the scale. So the third um, makes up, you know, it's a part of the scale, but it's a part of the chord in a major chord is made up of the root, the third, and the fifth. So when we're looking at, you know, when we're looking at the scales or when we're looking at um, what we would call like, you know, what we would call like the actual letter names of um, a scale or of a chord, you know, we're looking at, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and it repeats at C again. So if you're looking at C major, for example, I'm actually going to go ahead and type it so that you guys can see it. We're, we're looking at C major. And of course, there's a couple of different ways that I, that I can do this. So C, uh, D, E, F, G, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right, and then we'll put this on the screen so that you guys can see this. You can see what I'm talking about right here so if we're looking at c major for example and so first lesson we're talking about is understanding the difference between major and minor as a music producer that's important right maybe not being able to create certain chords right away but for sure you should know the difference between a major chord and a minor chord so if you're hearing a bunch of major Right. If you're hearing chords together, you should be able to see, hey, are those chords minor or are those chords major? And how can I find those chords? So if we're looking at, you know, C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, um, and it starts over at C. When we say the third, the third note in C major, the scale is an E. And what do you know? When we look at C major, the chord, C major, the chord is also the third, the, 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 the second note or the what we call the third is actually an E. So it matches up the third, right? The root, if we're on C major scale and we're and we're trying to figure out a C major chord, well, we start with the root. So the root is a C. So we know we have a C. If we don't know anything else, we know we got a C. All right, man, we got this C. Um, we know for sure we're supposed to have a C. Uh, like I said, we don't know if anything else is supposed to be there. We know it's supposed to be a C because C is the root. And then I'm trying to figure out how do I get to the next note? Well, the next note is the third, right? It's the third. So if I'm looking at my my notes then i'm looking hey what's the third the third is the e so i add the e and you barely can hear right you, if you play them together they kind of get you know they kind of get canceled out from amongst each other i'm actually going to go ahead and add in a different key a different keyboard right and um let me go up here and turn off this effect let's bypass that there we go so, so we have the we have the first two notes. Now we say, okay, how do you finish this chord? A chord is made up of three notes, or you know, more than one note essentially. 
but for a major triad, which is what we are building, a major triad has three notes, the root, the third, and the fifth, what's known as the fifth. Well, when we already have our cheat sheet up, so we can just look at what's the fifth letter starting from C. Uh, we have C, D, E, F, G. So we know that G is the fifth. So we can put them all together. Root, third, fifth. Root, third, fifth. Root, third, fifth. All right, so now let's do the same thing with D. Let's 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 just do the same exact formula that we just did using our cheat sheet. We'll do the same thing with the D chord. The same exact thing that we just did. We'll go D is our root. Um, if I'm starting with D, I skip E, I go to F, and then I skip G, I go to A. So there's our chord. And if I'm in C major and I want to stay in C major, then that would be the chord for C major. However, that is not a major chord. We have to be able to hear the difference. You know, why is that a major chord? Why is that not a major chord? Now I'm going to play the D major chord. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, okay. There we go. So now we're now we're playing D major. And as we play D major, we can actually hear the difference. And the difference in that is um, it sounds a lot brighter. As I said before, it's reaching upward. It's not reaching downward. It's reaching upward, right? So that's the that's the idea. You know, how does it sound? It actually sounds like it's reaching upward. So we want to um, understand that. That's how we kind of listen to the sound, how we listen to figure it out. This is down. It's like a down, sad, moody sound. This is going up. It's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. All right, cool. So now if we say, okay, cool, so let's keep building these chords, right? Because it's actually pretty fun and pretty easy when you look at it this way. If you have your notes that are supposed to be laid out, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, um, then you can very quickly figure out what notes you should be playing. And of course, none of these are flats. None of these are sharps. These are all, um, if you're on a, a traditional keyboard, this will all be all of the white keys. So, um, Uh, no real sharps or flats, uh, no accidentals, no black keys. So we found C major and we found D minor. Now we're going to go to E. So if we say we're on E, of course, we can see that there's a pattern, right? As we said before, there are patterns um, in music and those patterns is kind of where we get this idea of music theory. So as we figure out the patterns, we figure out the theory, right? The, the idea, the science, the, the, uh, the, the, the genius behind music. We figure out the, you know, mm, it just makes you talk like this, right? It's like, whatever. Okay. But if you um, figure out that there's a pattern, then you say, okay, hey, when I'm doing a major chord or when I'm doing a triad, I start on my root note and I basically just skip a note and then I play the next note and then I skip a note and I play the next note and now I have my chord, right? And so that's the pattern that you'll see from C to D to E to F to G to A to B gets a little different. That's a different kind of chord back to C, right? And so that's the that's the premise. That's the that's the basic premise when we're looking at um when we're looking at this idea of how to create this how to how to figure out these chords and scales. Man, my desk is kind of junky, huh? But that's okay. It's going to have to be All right, cool. But that's the overall premise for how um 
you will figure out these skills. Hey, if you've been watching for a moment and you are getting like any kind of benefit out of this video, I really would appreciate it if you could leave a like on the video and maybe comment, um, write something in the chat to let me know that you're there. If you have any questions, also please be sure to write your questions down in the chat as well so I can get to your questions. Let's get back to these chords and scales. So we've learned how to find uh, C major, C, which is the root note, E, what is it doing? I didn't ask you to do none of that extra stuff. Oh, I was touching this thing down. All right, anyway. So we have C is the root note. E is the third. G is the, uh, G is the fifth, right? So we have a major third and a fifth. And that's how you can figure out your major chord, right? Um, um, so one of the patterns that we have to look at and understand is the is the pattern of how we actually move between the letter names on the keyboard. Because we're looking at this keyboard and we can see, you know, as we learn the keys, as we learn the keys, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, as we learn where those keys are, we're trying to learn both. We're trying to learn two things at once. We're trying to learn one, how to create a chord. We're trying to learn how to name the chord and we're trying to learn how to create it, right? So it's, it's, it's naming it and creating it. And we see that there's a pattern. We see that we can skip, we can skip, we can skip keys in order to, uh, we see that we can skip keys in order to create a chord, but it's not actually giving us exactly what we want. If we want a major, if we want the major chord and we know we're gonna have a major chord, we gotta actually find a different pattern other than skip a note, land on a note, because that's not gonna work for getting your major or minor chords. But what that will work for is giving you a triad, giving you three keys together. And as long as you play three keys together where you're skipping one key and playing the, the next one, then you'll always find a triad, but you just won't know if it's a major or a minor. So this is how we can learn when we're getting to a major or a minor. It's all about that third. It's all about the second note that we play in our chord we're on the root our root can be c but what and our and our fifth can be g and those never have to change you can have a root c fifth g and that never has to change right you could throw a c on top of that and now you have this kind of sound but it's just very open it's just not giving you nothing until you add in that my, uh, until you add in that third. All right, so as you add in different chords and I mean different keys, you get different colors and textures and feelings, right? So, so, so the root and the fifth are working together. They kind of create a house for the other notes to fit inside of it. OK, um, so the what depending on what note is inside of it is going to actually decorate or give some variety to your chord. So the, the root and the fifth never change. Uh, so if our root is C, our fifth is a G. And we know we can just count that on the keys. One, two, three, four, five. If we're on C, that five will always be a G, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now we have to think about what about this third? What about this second note? Of course, this second note can be uh, multiple things, right? This second note can be lots of things. It doesn't have to be that third. What if I do that? What if, what if I do that, right? Now, now I have this. C, D, G, and then you 
you saying like, well, what is that? What's the CDG? That has nothing, to, right? So, so depending on what we do, you know, we can change the sound. What if I, instead of the D, what if I put the the F, uh, which would be our, which would be a fourth, so it'd be a one four five. sustain pedal here so so you know we can create different chords and we can play around and we can have fun figuring out the chords but let's say we want to be with the major chord and we want to be with the or minor chord we want to know exactly what we're playing to get a major chord, your second note, which would be your middle note, which would be an E in this case, C, E, G, right? We need to look at how many spaces are coming before, how many notes, how many spaces, how many tones, semitones are coming before we get to E. Before we get to E, how many are coming? So if we start on C, we have C sharp, D, E flat, then E. One, two, three, four. That gives us our major. So let me just say it like this. So if we want to find out how to create a major chord, we start on our root and we can count every single key until we get to the fourth key. And that will be our note that we need to play and it will be the major third so if we start on c if we start on c and we count four one two three four four puts us on our major third right where we want to be and guess what you can also count every single note until you get to the fifth three three times and you know for sure that that is a major chord. Do it on any key, any of these keys on the piano, uh, any of these keys on the piano. And as long as you're following that pattern, as long as you're following that pattern, you will have a major chord. So, so like I said, so let's say we are on this black key right here. This will be a G sharp, A flat. We're gonna count four keys. Uh, let me see, can you guys see my, you can't see me, I'll do it from up here. I'll do it up here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And that is the major. So it'll be a G sharp major. Right? Cool. It's obviously not like a play piano day for me, but um, I can teach it, you know, and if you if you get something out of it, awesome. So so we're looking at uh, chords and scales and, and different patterns, right? Um, let's try another note. Let's try this B, B flat, A sharp. We'll try this A sharp here. And hopefully um, you're using this piano roll as another guide. Um, you can use the piano roll as another guide as well to kind of help you to see it. Um, I want to make it a little bigger. I just want to make it a little larger. I think that's larger. I think it is. Boom. So hopefully you can see that um, in our uh, piano, you can see our piano roll there. So what are we saying? We're saying, we're saying A sharp. Um, we're gonna start with the root, A sharp. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And we know that that is a major.
feel like I'm about to play Mario Kart right now. So we can always find a major chord if we're following that pattern, right? So the pattern, again, like I said, the pattern would be counting from your root four and then counting from your second note three and that will give you a major every single time now what i'm also doing is i'm doing something called inverting i'm inverting the the chord so as we find the chord c e g and we know that these are the three notes these are the three notes that we're playing c e and g you can also invert that and you can play e g c and it's the same chord and you can play g c e and it's the same chord right the same chord it's just inverted but what's cool about the inversions is they can give you a totally different sound right while still being tonically sound so you know you, you have a new sound a movement but it's the same sound it's not changing from major to minor or from uh, one one key to a different key right that's that's the idea You can always just invert these. And when you invert the key, um, when you invert the chord, it just gives you a different style, a different flavor of that chord, but it's pretty much, it's pretty much the same chord. You know, uh, the chord doesn't change. It's pretty much the same chord and that's something that you can do to give you some different, you know, style and flavor and, and grace. So we were looking at major chords, um, also looking at minor chords now. So how do we find uh, minor chords? Um, that would be the next thing, right? So if we're saying, okay, well, uh, you showed me how I could find a major chord. Okay, now how can I find a minor chord, for example, okay? So if we wanted to find a minor chord, what we would need to do is uh, use a similar formula. So if the major chord was root note plus adding four semitones, one, two, three, four, or adding that third note, um, adding your third from the, uh, I should have created another one of these, what I should have did. Can I copy that? Okay, I can't copy it. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna type both things. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> why would I why would I need to copy it and, and have both things? It's just that doesn't make sense. That's not what I'm trying to do, obviously. Um so let's bring up our C D E F G A B C. So we'll bring this back up again so that we have it and it's there. So we're looking at C D E F G. And we're actually talking about minor chords. So, so we found one formula, right? And one formula was, um, one formula was the four plus three. So you have a root, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That gives us our major chord. The minor chord only changes that middle note, the third, essentially. So if we're on C, the third note in the scale of C is a E. Um, so it only changes that E. So to change that E, it would either go up a semitone or down a semitone. And when we say a semitone, we mean the notes that are right next to each other. So you know you have like the two keys, the white keys, but these white keys are not right next to each other. In between C, in between C and D, there is a black key. In between B and C, there's no key. And you can hear the difference. Right? Between. There's a difference. So, so those notes are right next to each other. So from a B to a C, that's one semitone. One. That's one semitone.
Um, so if I want to play a minor chord instead of a major chord, then I need to drop that middle note so that it's no longer playing a major uh, third, but instead it's going to be playing a flat third or minor third. So I drop it down one semitone. doesn't matter what note it is. You just drop it down one semitone, you make it a flat, and now all of a sudden it is now a major chord. So we have this B major, we drop that middle, it's now B minor. We have C major, we drop the middle down one, it's now C minor. Now what is the what's the what's the formula? The formula is root three, one, two, three, and then four. One, two, three, four. So C minor has always been like my favorite uh, uh, key to play in. It's not really like the greatest key for like contemporary music um, or anything like that. Any key is a key, you know, as long as you're playing the music, it's fine. But um, I just tend to like C minor because it's very easy for me to move around on the keyboard to play that so i just tend to like that more than you know anything else so anyway it's hard to use this one because all of the keys are black and so even though that looks cool it's probably hard for you to actually see it so yeah we won't use that all right so cool so we're looking here oh so yeah so we were talking about minor chords so now if i go to any other if I go to any other key, um, any of these other notes, um, I can figure out how to play a minor chord very easily. If I go to G, um, if I go to G and I know I can count up three and then count up four, that gives me G minor. So to find a minor chord, the formula is actually root and then count three, one, two, three, then count four, one, two, three, four. And that's the easy way to find it. Of course, if you wanted to think about it in terms of like, well, how do I figure it out in terms of like, um, you know, I want to be as, as music theory as possible. How do I figure it out then? Well, then what you're saying is you're saying your root plus your minor third plus your fifth root minor third fifth and somebody just might say well what is what is a minor third or flat third right so if i'm looking at um if i'm looking at this text that we just created if i'm looking at this text that we created here i'll drop it here so that you guys can see it down here below right here Right here, uh, if we're looking at this, you know, this scale for C uh, major, right? This is a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, where our C is the root. Um, if I'm looking at C, I can look at what is the third letter? What is the fifth letter? Um, and that's how I create my chord. That's how I create my chord. And, and I understand it that way. And the root, third, and fifth, all have a major um they have a they have a they have a purpose inside of the scale and inside of music theory if you have a root and you have a fifth you can move from your root to your fifth and from your fifth you can make your way back to your root right so 
they have their own reasons and purposes, you know, outside of just being the first, second, third note inside of the scale. They have a reason and a purpose um, tonal, to, tonally. Um, and when you're thinking about music, they have a reason for where they are placed and why they sound how they sound. So, you know, that's where things like in gospel music, you get things called like passing tones, right? Oh, I was real low. So, you know, or, or like, you know, if you hear, if you hear on C and then I go down. So this is, this is, this is leading me to something. This is leading me to this A. And why does it lead me to this A? Why does it lead me to this A? Well, because this E, this E chord that I'm playing, this is actually um, a fifth. Or, it's, or the A is the fifth. The A is the fifth of this chord, right? So, so, so. In other words, um, we when we're looking at these different letters, right? They move up and down the scale in a way. And when you listen to them, it sounds a certain way. So if I go C, D, E, F, G, C, right? And it's almost like it just leads you there. And that's what it that's what that means. When you have the fifth, the fifth leads you somewhere. So if you if you get to that fifth, it's leading you back to the root. Just like that third is leading you to the fourth. It's like, it's it wants to go somewhere, right? All right, cool. So we've been doing this for about an hour. I don't want to chill, cow. We're going back. We're going back to my playlist. Back to my playlist. I just like to play that. In the, I don't want to play in the background so I can see it. Um, uh. Willie Jackson, what's good, man? Sounds like it's saying the alphabet. <laughs> right? Yeah, it kind of it kind of is. Like when you so you you think about that A B C D. I'm trying not to play like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but um, ABCs is another example of like, you know, melody and how melody works. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think it's G. A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P. Yeah, well, something like that. So, so the idea of what we're trying to talk about right now is um, the letter names having purpose besides just being the first or the second note and things of that nature. In music theory, um, the chords and scales move um, together in a way because um of the tonality that's in that pitch it just moves in a certain way so when you get to a c it naturally leads you either to d or it leads you to its fifth right So, so this G, you know, the G, it all works to lead you to somewhere.
right. I'm having a moment, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just... I knew that. I knew that that's what that was. Whatever. Let me just go back. All right, so these are chords that have nothing to do with the the level of, of uh, practice and, and learning that we was just on. Um, that's something totally different, right? But understanding how to find a made a major chord a minor chord very important and um it will help you in figuring out you know what kind of mood am i trying to create when i'm making the beat if i'm making if i'm making the beat and the beat sounds one way and i want it to sound a certain way what can i do so let's um let's play something real quick mm, mm. Cool. So we'll play that. We'll quantize that. Okay. Somehow I got quantized as a 16th triplet, but it worked for the second time around. So let's say that we we have that and we're trying to figure out, Hey, you know, uh, what kind of mood am I trying to create? What, what kind of scale? What kind of scale should I be in? What kind of mood? Should I do a minor? Should I do a major? Should I start with the chords? Should I start with the melody? You know, where should we start? Where should we begin, right? And um, it's totally up to you, you know, and especially, you know, a lot of people, they like to use the piano roll. They like to use the piano roll to uh, create. And so I'll show that as well um, because, you know, everybody doesn't use MIDI keyboards and use pianos to actually play out their stuff. Some people just like to use the piano roll um, rather than using a keyboard and stuff. So there used to be a way, there used to be a way that you could do it. But for some reason, there it goes. Now it's getting a little larger. So, you know, let's stay in the white key, C, D, E, F, G, A, A, B, C. So we'll stay in those, right? Just the white keys. And we got this beat. Let's let's fade that out. Right. And um, let's say now we want to work on melody. Um, nothing wrong with singing. Singing helps you find melodies. And that's what I suggest that you do. If you're trying to figure out a melody or you're trying to figure out something you want to do to the beat, sing along to it until you find something that you like. So that sounds like something kind of upbeat, kind of happy. So I'm, I'm going to say that that's a major. And um, duh. and dun 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 dun. So I know that that's my first note. So I got that coming in. Bum, dun 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 bum, bum. Oh, okay. So now we just kind of going along, singing along to it. Okay, is that is that how fast I want it to be? Because that seems like that's coming in very slow. So let's actually speed this up a little bit. We'll speed it up and we'll keep that same melody. Mm, that's too fast. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, still too fast. Dun dun dun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're getting there. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, there you go. So, mm, mm. 
cool. I'm gonna actually play the rest because I'm tired of doing that. <laughs> yeah, so for me, uh, it's just easier to play it right on the keyboard. But now you can at least see both ways. You can see, oh, okay, how, what does it look like when it's being played? And what does it look like when it's being drawn? That's what it looks like. So, dun, 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 dun. And um, as you can see, a lot of these, none of these really are falling on the ones, the main of the measure there. So these are like, you know, the, 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 the rhythms, the rhythms are different with these. The only one that comes in on the one is the first one. Uh, we can drag this over. So we have this and um, in reason, this is a darker red because it's coming in louder. So let's actually lighten that up. So it's not coming in so so loud. All right, cool. Let's play it back. Cool. Let's uh, move this around so we get the fill we want. Dum 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 dum. So we need to give it a little bit of that, a little more, a little more. A little more. So we'll go to one twenty. Cool. Let's actually quantize in the 16th and see if that helps. Yeah, I think that would help. So let's actually shift these notes over now that they've been quantized in the 16th triplet. Cool, so our main note is this A. Oh, now the A is gone. Our main note is the A. So our main note is this A. So cool. So now we, we're looking at melody. So, you know, baseline melody, right? So if we have this melody and we want to go to the baseline next, um, you know, how do bass lines work with the regular notes, right? And so we have the we have the regular notes. Let's go ahead and copy those over. We'll copy them over to our base. Copy them to, to our base. So of course, you know, we could have it just play that, right? And um, if we wanted, we could just drop this down uh, octave. And
could just do that right if we wanted to or we could just look at the we could look at what makes up this bass you know what makes up this melody as a bass line so we say of this we're gonna lose this as a bass line there's our root the a right let's 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 extend it out So we can add something going up, we can add something going down. So let's let's add that in. That was the same note. So we can add it, you know, to add some some flavor into this melody, right? We can of course split this into two notes and you know get interesting with it all right we can we can play around with it Let me zoom out so you can see more of the melody. All right, cool. So here we go. So, so we have a melody and we have a bass melody. So what if we wanted to create chords? What if we want to create chords from that? So, um, you know, one way that we do that is we say, okay, well, we know that the melody, what the melody is doing, So, I mean, what would you do? Would you just play a chord on every one of those, right? You could. You could if you wanted to. We could. We could play that. Dang, that just sounds really bad, Chris. <laughs> Oh, let's go up. Uh, let's go up one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, you could do something like that, right? You could play, or you could just choose to do it only on the root. So let's let's play that, and that's just a major triad, minor triad. So that's just one chord, but we found the chord from our root note which was a so everything starts on a and then we can do some inversions like we learned earlier if we wanted to we can just invert that so now let's create this uh So now what is that? So if we have our main 
Oh, well, if we have our main melody happening, and we know our main melody is this piano line, it's creating our main melody. Ba -dum -ba 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 -ba. Dun, 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 All right, that's... That's creating our main melody, and we have our bass line. So we know that those two things is this, and we have chords. We know we have some chords. Right, so so that's the idea of that. So now, uh, what the next thing that we would have um, would be called like uh, uh, some would call it counter melody or a supporting melody. Um, it just depends on uh, on what kind of style you you create when you are creating uh, that style. So when you adding melodies, of course, we could just. We could just play the same melody, right? We could keep playing that same melody. But if we play something that's not with that melody, then that would be considered a counter melody. So um, the idea comes from what would be called like um, call and response. So call and response is one of the ways we get something called a counter melody. So, you know, when people would sing, um, one person would sing one part and then the response to that, right? The call and response uh, would be whatever the response is, would be a different melody or a similar melody. Um, so you get this call and response. So you got a melody and a counter melody. So if our melody is the, 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 so then our counter melody might be uh, so then we're going to play something against that melody either that goes along with it call and response or something that just you know uh, adds to it like an accompanying right like accompanying right different parts and different sounds going together so let's let's try and just you know create some kind of counter melody I like that. So that that just kind of just goes down the scale there. So in our counter melody, we're actually playing the same or similar notes, but what we're actually doing is we're playing in it in a different rhythm. So it's creating a different melody that we can actually hear um, in those different instruments um, as we are creating that sound. And so like this is this is the things that you want to like keep in track of and you want to learn how to do and learn how to manipulate as a producer. This is the kind of music theories this is the kind of music theory, the understanding of music that you want to have. Hold on, I'll be right back.
all right so um back to what we was just saying so we're talking about melodies and counter melodies right so uh we have our main melody and we have this counter melody dun, 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 dun. So they kind of go, they they kind of go together, not completely, you know, opposed. They're not completely opposed to one another, um, but they have their own, you know, styles in terms of the notes that are being played. And so that's how you get this idea of uh, counter melodies and such. to play different chords there instead of the chords we're playing basically we're just playing these uh, a chord inverted that's basically all we were doing what other chords would work there is the question so the other chords that will work there would be the other chords that are found inside of the melody or the other chords that are found within inside of the bass melody right so we wouldn't want to just randomly play a random chord where we can play chords that are actually found inside of the melody that we have created so so well of course the a is there bum, bum, bum. that's literally a just just uh broken up mm -mm -mm. what was that thing man <laughs> that bug it might be some more bugs shoot i was cutting the grass today I was cutting the grass 
Did I bring that inside? I didn't bring that inside. Dang. Anyway, it's going to make me have to get the vacuum cleaner out in this thing. All right, so I have to stomp that bug out real quick. So we were here with this A. So as you learn how to play different chords, you can play different kinds of chords. So we've been playing this major chord, but what if we wanted to add in a seventh chord? So now let me go over here, back over here to my uh, notes. And then we say, what do we want to learn? What if we wanted to play a seventh chord? You know, what, what information will we need to know in order to turn our uh, major chord into a seventh chord? right and then there's different kinds of seventh seventh chords so right what do we need for the seventh chord So um, to play our seventh chord, uh, we're going to take our major triad and uh, we're going to add the seventh note uh, in that key. So if we're in C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Um, and one way that you can always look at it is the seventh chord, that last note, will always be one semitone below the root note. If it's more than a semitone below the root note, it's no longer a seventh chord. It's a, it could be a, it's like this is a C7, um, but it's not a C chord, a C, C major seven. This is C major seventh. Here's a C minor seventh, So, you know, part of my ADHD, 
So here's our C. Now, you know, when we're talking about playing these chords, you know, what, what kind of bass notes do we want to play with the chords? This is where things get interesting because um, there's different bass notes and different bass combinations that you can play for different chords. So for example, you can play the root and the fifth as your bass and then your chord. Of course, you can also just play the chord in your left hand. So the idea is, you know, being able to play the chord in your left and being able to then also play the chord in your right, play them together. So seventh chords are really cool because essentially all you need to do is play your root major, find the note right below the root. In this case is a B, add it to the top. Now you have a seventh chord. Uh, let me make sure you actually see it in here. So that's my, uh, Bring this down. And that's my C major. One, two, three. C major is right there. The root note is C. Right below C is a B. Um, C major, C, E, G. Right below C, there's a B. The next note right below it is a B. Add that to the top. C major 7. Cool. Let's do it with an F. Right below that F is the E. Add it to the top. Gives you a seven. Uh, let's add my uh, webcam back in so people can see what I'm doing. So uh, how about A? Right below the A is this. Right below the A is this G sharp or A flat. We add it to the top. That's our seventh. Now, why do seventh chord sounds how they sound? What's the music theory behind the seventh chord? Well, we know if we start here on our C, and we know that our G creates the house. It creates what's being housed. It kind of creates like a nice little house for the rest of the notes to live in. So we got our root and we have our fifth. It creates a nice little house for us to live in. And then we can just invite people over. So we invite the B over and that creates it a seventh. And then if we want, we can create a ninth. So if this is the seventh, then that's the eighth. And that means the D is the ninth the ninth, right? So
so we just we just keep inviting people over we we have our our root and our fifth and we just invite people over we just say hey come over So we can just pretty much create whatever kind of chord we want to create. But creating this seventh chord is very, very easy. All we need to do is find our major third, our, our, our major chord, right? Our major triad, whatever it is, whatever the triad we want. It could be this, though this is a minor. We need a major. And I say, what's my root? My root is this black key. I'll play it up here so you can see. My root is this black key. That's the root. F sharp. If F sharp is the root. I put that on top. So I play that. And now I have my seventh chord. And you can create that seventh chord anywhere. And seventh chord just gives you a little bit more color than, you know, just playing with the traditional major triad so i'll show you so here's our major triad that was just four of the major triad now let's do it with a uh with the seventh now if you can hear it it just kind of adds a little bit more color, a little more swag, a little more vibrance. Now, what you can also do, just like we learned about our majors, you can also invert them so that you can put the different notes in different places. So I got my A at the bottom here of the seventh chord. But what if I just move it to the top? No, I got that. It's a different sound. We can keep going with that inversion until we get to this. Where are we at? What was we inverting? Was we? Oh yeah, we was inverting A. Okay, cool. So we have this A, A, C, E, G. So we're gonna convert that. Put that up there. We have the E. Now we've inverted it a third time. And every time you invert it, it, it puts a different note at the top. And so what you usually hear, like I said before, usually you hear the root and the fifth because it's the root, the bass note and the top note. That's usually the textures and the tones that you hear come through your chords the most. Everything else is just flavor. It's just seasoning. It's just adding to the sound. But really what you're listening for is that top note and that bass note, essentially. That's what's really, you know, coming through. But run. You know what I'm saying? This is a chicken salad. This is a chicken salad with some bacon. Chicken salad. Chicken salad with bacon. Chicken salad with bacon and some egg. You know what I'm saying? Chicken salad with bacon, egg, and some shrimp.
So, you know, you got your main dish, chicken salad, and then as you add in stuff, you get some different flavors, you get some different things in there. You start adding in different notes. Like, that's just a regular, you know, that's just regular chicken salad. But this is chicken salad with some shrimp. It's got some shrimp in it. It's got some, it's got some extra, ooh. Essentially, it's a whole nother chord, but um, still basically just a seventh chord. Uh, still a seventh chord, of course. Okay. So, um, let's say we want to add a bunch of notes and we want to get that ninth in there too. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so now we're, now we're in though. Third, seventh, ninth, eleventh. We're in eleventh territory now. So, drop it down. Now we're in the ninth. Okay, so here's our ninth chord. All we're doing is playing the root and then we skip a note and play the next note and we skip a note and play the next note so if we want to see we skip D play E skip F play G skip A play B skip C we get back to the C skip C play D right that gives us the ninth um, it's easiest you know when you see it that way because it's G C major right so, you know, to play a C major chord, C, E, G. To play a C major seventh, you add the B. Now it's four notes instead of three. Uh, to play the ninth is going to be five notes. Uh, um, I mean, six notes. One, two, three, four. I can't count. Five notes. Here's our seventh. We need one more. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's the idea with the, you know, the chords, you know, you're just building on to the chords. But of course, if you're just playing it, if we're just playing it in the same pattern, then, you know, that's not fun. That's not going to give you the sound that you're looking for. Um, you really have to mix up where those keys are found. Um, because that's the first inversion, but there's so many other inversions. So let's say we take that seventh chord and we put the ninth as the bass. So all we did was instead of playing like because of course you know we have the seventh chord for example this f f uh this f major this f major seventh chord instead of playing like a, a, a standard f f major seven chord would just put the f in the bass we just would apply the f into the bass and uh that would just be the simplest thing to do Right, um, but instead, 
we can say, oh man, we want to, we want to add in, we want to add something else in, right? Major, 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th. It's a 13th chord. Oof. All those chords, right? All those keys. It's just adding in note after note after note after note after note. But it's when you get to playing the stuff with different inversions where it's like, okay, what am I hearing on the third? I'm hearing that top note. I'm hearing that top note. So we can also play that C and then we can play that. There's different ways that we can play it. We don't have to play it the same exact way. We don't have to just play one note on top of the next note on top of the next note, right? We we want to get the the tones that we want to hear. So that's the idea. And yeah, we can play instead of playing that, instead of playing that regular major chord, we can play a uh, seventh chord instead, a ninth chord. That's the idea, essentially. I'm gonna take this and copy this and move this to so like block 32 somewhere down the way because I don't want that there. All right, cool. So um, that's pretty much gonna uh, do it for our um, our uh, music theory uh, for producers. Um, now hopefully, if you were watching, you got something out of it and uh, you were able to follow along and learn some stuff. And if you're watching this back on the replay, um, more power to you. If you have any questions, uh, please be sure to leave uh, comments uh, down below uh, so that, you know, I can talk with you guys in the, in the chat room, in the comment section. <laughs> What's going on? It's time to get out of here. Uh, talk to you guys in the, in the comments. Um, if you haven't checked out the lo-fi playlist uh please be sure to check out the lo-fi playlist um but if you have any questions about that yeah man the different keys so today we went over finding um the c major scale key of c finding the major chords minor chords a formula for finding major and minor chords and then we also talked about melody, counter melody, um, combining those melodies with chords, bass melody. Um, and we also talked about um, advanced chord structure. So, you know, moving from how do you go from a C major chord to a C seventh chord, a C ninth chord, a C 11th chord, a C 13 chord, right? Um, what do these chords mean and you know why why are they important um and just learning them you know learning them figuring them out learning how to name them how to call them what they're called um and just having some fun so i really hope that you guys uh enjoyed this stream um i gotta get ready to go pick up my wife uh and um Keep things going, man, here on the YouTube channel. Um, 
I gotta I gotta do some some new stuff. I gotta do some new stuff. I gotta I gotta do some new stuff. I've been like super busy. I'm having a lot of stuff going on. Um and um I haven't been able to plan out the stream to make sure that you know I'm streaming certain days and being more consistent. Um but um uh, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we can, you know, what I'm saying, create a more persistent, consistent vibe um, as we, you know, create these beats and cook up and stuff like that. But um, in the meantime, yeah, man, thanks for rocking with your boy. And um, I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank you.